I can't live without my mosquito coil now. I had it running in here <laughs> while I'm watering because they keep attacking me. Them gnats. I mean mosquito. What am I gnats? I got gnats in the brain now. Okay, so I'll continue watering this. My Krasu Australia is looking so gorgeous with its stress colors. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> because it needs to be watered. I haven't watered this area for a long, 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 long time. And this Jacob Senei coming from inside, I decided to take it outside and it's starting to color up because inside the house it was just pale. It just looks so sick. So I thought. I'm going to make you purple again because during summertime, Senisha Hakob Senia, I'm just going to say, or Weeping Jade, they actually go quite purple. So now this one now that I have had this out here for a while, this is in my covered area just at the back porch. Now this one now, I can take this into my 50 zone area to make it color up but for the meantime while we had 33 degrees today it has cooled down a bit now it's 29 degrees so I'm gonna water this area here but outside there I can't water over there yet because the Sun is still shining hot the plants is just gonna get shocked so I'm just gonna let them cool down a little bit before I water them but in here all my chivrias and my string of pearls, my Cilicio Raulianus is thirsty. <laughs> so it is now almost 6.30 in, is that evening or afternoon? Well, the sun's still out, so <laughs> I say late afternoon. I want to water my plants here, which have been dependent on the rain, so I'm just gonna chit chat here while I'm chitty chatting. I mean, while I'm watering. So I think you would like to follow my hands, wouldn't you? Anyway, <laughs> these are my Echeveria. <laughs> Echeveria. Echeveria. Or Echeveria. Someone commented, left a comment, correcting me about the way I say Echeveria. Oh, hello, spider. I don't mind being corrected, but to me, it's really irrelevant whether how we say it. You can say Kalanchoe or Kalankoe, whatever suits you, whatever tickles your fancy. Speaking of tickle, I just, hang on. What am I doing? Oh my goodness. I need to water a whole lot here, so I don't know where to go, okay. Drown, baby, drown. Oh, this one. What are you? Some One of my corunculated plants. Look at that. That uh, I took out there because it needs to be watered. And I forgot to bring it in back where it was supposed to be. In the shade here. And have you been burned? No. No sunburn. So, I got, I'm watering my... What do you call this? Why do I keep saying I'm watering my chivria? I'm watering my hawothia. <laughs> my, of course, we, you all know this is all mine. But why do I have to keep saying that? It's it's like so very ownership type of thing. <laughs> anyway, so 2022. What is it going to bring for us? Oh, this is Rosal. Hang on, I'm just going to straighten you out. This is you are Rosal, aren't you? Oh, the labels. I hate these labels. Yes, it is Rosal. I can still see the R there. This is not my hybrid. It just so happened that this thing grew in my garden and it was a leaf grown from a Monroe. When it grew, it looked nothing like the Monroe already or something like that. I'm getting confused now. So whether you are, you are a Monroe. Yes. But anyway, the heat 33 degrees is cooking up my brain and making me grumpy. I don't like the heat. I love the cold, but I don't like the heat. I get all hot and bothered. Look, I've got all these succulents now. Oh yes, dancing bones, that's it. Uh, this is my Hatiora. Salico, okay, let's just read it, because <laughs> it's really hard to say. Salicornioides. 
salicornioides or drunken stream or um, something dancing bones that's it dancing bones so this is what dancing bones look like they're very skinny I uploaded a video a few days ago of this new plant that I haven't got an idea on I'm actually thinking are you one of them but anyway this is a ripsalis I think hang on I'll just get the plant because a few people have said this is this one here is dancing bones it's almost like dancing queen no dancing bones look the difference so Hatiora dancing bones or drunkard's dream why would they call it drunkard's dream it's funny what what they I don't know the names that they come up with plants oh speaking of names did you know that Sinisho here string of pearls have been changed to Curio Rauleanos it's not Senecio Rauleanos anymore so <laughs> With the emphasis on the anus. <laughs> oh my goodness, that doesn't sound right. Okay, hang on, I'll just put this one back. So, okay. How do you look after the string of pearls? Okay, so it's better. I think they should just say string of pearls. Look, I got big ones, I got small ones. And this is really, really long. If, ah, oh, look at that. Look how long that is. Oh. Yucurio Raulianus Okay, I put you there <laughs> Hang on, I'm just gonna water this Yes, because they're all dry Although we've had rain lately It's been really, really dry And by the way, temperature is probably about 28 degrees now In the shade or 27, I can feel it's a little bit cooler Compared to today, I think 33 today, did I say that already? Now, these ones uh, are string of beans or string of watermelon. There's too many strings. Uh, the string of watermelon or string of bananas here as well. So are they gonna change all the Sinisho to Kurio now? I don't know. But anyway, they are very easy to grow. I started with, well, okay, five years now. Can't believe it's five years. With a small piece like oh my goodness i can't even find a piece small enough hang on okay i started with about this size which that much five years ago i started with that much and i paid i think three dollars for it and it was just a cutting and anyway now they have grown this one here doesn't have a hole that, that metal pot as well <laughs> that metal pot but if you take a look at this this thing has just look it touched soil and it started growing so along the string it will form some nodes this is like sort of nodes here can you see that's just the end bit of the stem but that one is a node that's got root in it and this one look oh, hang on well, are you a nodes as well or you're a node from another one there you go see look at that oh that one is not that's the part of the flower but see the root it's just coming out so they're quite easy to grow. So the minute that touches the soil, it will grow. Now, this is hardy. I've got it outside. It's hardy up to minus four degrees Celsius. Now, this same with this Ripsalis here. So this type of Ripsalis that sort of shoots off this uh, satellite. I call that satellite growth. Water, water. Now, care for them. I don't really care much for them. <laughs> I mean, literally, I don't look after it. Since I planted these ones here five years ago, I haven't, I think I fertilized it twice, once a year. In the first couple of years, I threw a handful of sea mungus in it. After that, I haven't really fertilized it. So they don't really need much looking after. And they just basically grow. And so easy to grow that even if they say online, the cultural notes for okay look bubbles showing so that needs more watering it says minus four only celsius but i'll show you one that i've grown outside now do you see what i see now this is a variegated form of string of pearls let's just call it string of pearls much easier so having it grown out in the open i should have another one somewhere anyway this one was one that I intentionally placed here just to see how 
it's going to grow. And it went all red and lost its variegation. So this is a variegated, variegated one. The variegation you will lose if you put it, expose it to the sun. So string of pearls, if you want it to stay green. Oh, there it is. Hello. How are you there? Are you a string of pearls? Hang on, I'll hang this one up here. I got an obstacle course. Oh no, this is angel's tears. Look, angel's tears. So basically, angel's tears will also hang on to here. So they're all the same. See, that's angel's tears as well. So look how red it is. Oh my goodness, you look beautiful. So this is actually a string of angel's tears, but the same difference. This is a hybrid of the Raulianos and hang on this is also a string of angels tears they basically are easy to grow and if they can survive out here in the 50% UV shade cloth area or even out in the open I got one of the string of pearls that are out in the open and it has survived I don't understand how a few people I've known keep killing them. It's got to be your soil mix. You have to find the right soil mix for your succulents. So generally, most of my succulents, well, put it this way, all of my succulents are basically living on master succulent soil mix. That is my general purpose mix, but I adjust it according to succulents that require a lot more watering. Oh, my whimsy is dying. From thirst look at that it's going yellow look so that needs to be watered oh but look how beautiful that is oh my goodness okay it just stops okay a lot of see I need to water I need to water a 30% chance of rain today but I'm waiting it's can you see the clouds It's overcast but I don't think it's gonna drop and if it does there's gonna be very little rain anyway it's not enough to wet all the soil of my succulents so a lot of them as well if they kept dry or stay dry for a while they become hydrophobic or afraid of water like if you water it say for example the soil is exposed here the water will just pull on the top and go over in the side not getting the roots wet or where the water is needed so your succulent will still be thirsty so what I like to do is spray it with soil wetter or my seaweed soil wetter first just to wet the soil just so as to break it down that way the water that I'm going to give it will get absorbed much better so anyway hang on I'll go back to my watering over there oh look at this oh look at you look at it's like a hemangioma a strawberry <laughs> hemangioma with this uh red banana look at that but I think it's beautiful Look at those bumps. I'm sure that's a disease of some sort. But because we had this year, I had I never experienced so much fungus this year. But I don't, I did not spray. A lot of my succulents, I just sprayed them with my methyl solution just to kill off whatever direct contact for the fungus and the mold and that sort of thing. But the rest of them, I just kept them dry and this one hasn't been sprayed but it's got all that little funky bumps now so I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing do you have a caterpillar oh my goodness look another caterpillar <gasps> see oh I hate them caterpillars got a hole okay and a mossy is biting me got him look at that little caterpillar you nasty little thing and I'm sure there should be another. Oh, there's another one there, look. <gasps> okay. I'm sorry. You're going to die. <laughs> okay. I dropped a couple of leaves, but Pachyveria string of bananas is very easy to grow, but it's just beautiful, isn't it? This one, I'm going to put that in the garden because I've already propagated some baby leaves. And within, I think it was September, when I took the leaves, October, November, December, <laughs> three months. <laughs> This is now three months old. And look, string of hearts. That purple thing that are grown from a seed. Yes, you can collect the seed of string of hearts and grow it. And look at that. So there's a baby purple heart now. Look at the purple heart. You got a purple heart. Okay. Now, this one was grown in the grow light or inside my grow tent. 
and after it got attacked by fungus nets, I let it dry up. So I really wanted to do a video of how to deal with fungus nets, but first off, well, it's just basically to show you the different experiments I've done with them, and it's just hopeless. I've tried this, I've tried that, and in the end, I resulted, uh, well, I uh, resolved it with just keeping the soil dry. I dried up all the soil, let the soil dry up. So with uh, grown plants or the bit bigger ones, it's not too bad, but the baby ones are the worst. Okay, so I'm going to take you, so if there's still a sort of, growing like hang on wait a minute so okay i've got my canter here that are grown from a leaf have had i left that inside they would have been attacked by gnats so i just placed them in my coconut coir let's check it out so that one yes there's no uh root yet on that one so i just let it sit on top and yes look at the roots yes Hey, Kante baby. Now, also that is Sedum hernandesii or green turtle eggs. And inside they're being attacked by fungus gnats, so I brought them outside. I've grown the leaf out, uh, inside, and once it's got roots, I put it in here. So I haven't watered it since I placed it in here, and I put topsoil or the top part of the coconut coir was actually dry and then now it's all wet so maybe moisture from the bottom raised to the top to wet everything but everything seems okay and happy and those are a couple of my Echeveria govoidis rufus I actually named that plant so the mother plant has died but I was able oh it's still actually sorry it's not dead it's still inside <laughs> It started rotting, so I stripped all the bottom leaves, but the mother plant is still alive, it's inside. But these are the two leaves that actually grown from, or the two babies that grown from leaves, so they're quite easy to grow. So I'll go back to my fungus gnats. So you have to keep the soil dry. So even this one, this was growing inside my grow tent, my lemon and lime silk variegated, and also my best baits. And the minute I brought them outside here, and I haven't watered it. You can see that the soil is separating from the edges there. So that means the soil is really dry, but I can feel that the plant is still plump enough. There's a slight softness to it, but it's still plump enough, enough to handle not being watered for a while. So it's been out here for about five days, and that one is about a week. And the same story, and also my uh, Karma Lola. <laughs> I brought it out last night and anyway just to because I have to water it because it started uh, drying up the leaves so I soaked it and then brought it out here and this one before when I used to touch this all the nuts would just come out and since I brought them here left them uh, dry them out now I don't see any fungus nuts anymore so you can see that the soil is really 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 dry but the plants are still nice and plump so I'll hold off watering until the weather cools down in a couple of days because tomorrow we're gonna get 31 still and uh, forecast rain tomorrow but I'm not holding my breath I'm sure it's gonna rain a little bit but we're gonna miss out and this one as well this is my variegated suyun and also lemon lime variegated and also my sedum my sedum clavatum that's lost all the top leaves because of the fungus gnats. I hate them things. So let your soil dry out. And then if you need to water, just dunk. Say for example, this one, if I need to water the roots, I'm going to dunk this like halfway only. So only for a few seconds. So be better if you have some soil wetter to make it uh, speedier, to, to get it wet much faster. And then you just dunk it halfway and then pull it out and make sure that the top is dry because if the top is dry the fungus gnats can't lay their eggs so the fungus gnats itself 
it's not going to hurt the plant. But what's going to hurt your plant is the little larvae or larva that is grown or the eggs that's growing underneath. They like to grow underneath the plants as well where the baby roots are. So they feed on it. So I hate them things. And the mature ones, if you have some sticky paper like this one, then they will stick to it. So this is supposed to be a string of pearls. <laughs> <laughs> video and I end up talking about fungus gnats. I hate them. I hate them with a the passion. So it nearly killed a few of my plants and luckily I was able to notice that if the soil is dry there's less fungus gnats. If the soil is wet they seem to just grow crazy. So I tried all I except I haven't tried using neem oil. That's the only thing. I haven't tried I tried hydrogen peroxide. They laughed at the hydrogen peroxide. It doesn't work. It will only work if the soil is dry. So basically the soil has to be dry before you apply the hydrogen peroxide. But that's just defeating the purpose, isn't it? Because the, there's no fungus gnats in it. They're all dead. And apparently they're supposed to say dormant. I don't think so. Uh, the shells, I can see a lot of the the carcass or the the cocoon or the pupae or whatever sitting on top so when you water it you see all these skeletal fungus gnat skeletal remains that flows on top of the pot when you water it so anyway guys this is already long enough this is our first uh video of my vlog video for 2022 and my <laughs> Compton carousel is still alive. I'm just scared every day I come out here and look at it, you know So this is the ones that's getting the most look at so the rest is just sort of a bridesmaid to <laughs> My Compton carousel. I really really love it, but I'm also liking my mini bell. Look how beautiful the color so Anyway, that's all and then this one is supposed to be variegating. Look, can you see? that uh, lilac spoon or cupid's heart or there's another name for it topsy daddy but anyway guys that's all for now for this video and i'm going to continue watering and also i've got given a variegated suyon but this one is just green and white variegation and my mrs richards which was attacked by fungus gnats as well is now have now recovered but it's just nice and fast so this is a variegated mrs richards and she's happy now but it's also needs watering but i think 80 percent dry now i'm gonna leave it for a couple more days before i water them otherwise oh my goodness my whimsy brother or sister um because it's a prince isn't it so <laughs> this is yeah so it's a black prince or the Willy Wonka. So even the name Willy Wonka, yeah, that's from a Willy Wonka. It's still Black Prince. But that one, now look how beautiful the variegation. So I think that one is going to turn out to be a beautiful best baits. And also that one is the last of my variegated Victor Radar. And hopefully that will grow. But anyway, that's all for now. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. So, this is an add-on. Water and soil mix. Find the right soil mix for your string of pearls and you will be happy. You will never have to cry again because your string of pearls died. They will just live and live and live. And if your uh, hard working enough and you keep propagating not lazy like me <laughs> then you're gonna end up with millions curtains like a wall curtain of string of pearls or curio raule anus